wings and skim across the sky? Or would I take the wings of gulls and glide across the seas? Or would I buzz around the flowers with wings of busy bees? Perhaps with wings of butterflies, I'd flutter out of sight. But with mosquito wings, I guess I'd flit about. And bat! Hello. <laughs> Hello. So, Ellis, have you decided which kind of wings you'd have? Oh, not yet. There are so many to choose from, and they can all do different things. How do you mean different things? Wings just fly, <laughs> don't they? Not at all. Wings come in all sorts of shapes, sizes and colours. And that means they can fly in lots of different ways. this bird uses its strong wing muscles. Its wings are covered with long flight feathers, which help lift it into the air. Without feathers, birds wouldn't be able to fly. If you keep your eyes open, you can find all sorts of feathers from birds in your area. Got to be a bit of a detective, though, to find out exactly which feather belongs to which bird. Now, Victoria and Felicity have been collecting all sorts of feathers. Let's try and work out what sort of birds they come from. Now, that's a mighty fine feather there. That's beautiful, isn't it? And what sort of clues does this give us about the bird it belongs to? First of all, do you think it's a big bird or a small one? A big bird. Yes, it's quite a big feather, isn't it? And also the colour will give us a clue as well, because it's a white feather. So what sort of bird do you think it would come from? A white bird. Yeah, I agree with that as well. So it's a white bird, quite big. How do you think this bird would fly? Do you think it would sort of flutter very quickly its wings, or do you think it would flap them slowly through the air? Quite slowly. Quite slow. Yeah, I agree with that. Have you got any ideas of what sort of bird it would come from? A swan. A swan? Yes, I agree with that. Swan's feathers not only help them to fly, but also keep them warm and dry when they swim, a bit like a raincoat. They often swim where ships sail, and sometimes oil leaks out of the ships into the water. If the oil gets into the swan's feathers, they stick together and the swan can't move. The oil has to be cleaned off each feather very carefully. Then the swan can go back to its habitat. have to be kept clean, otherwise they won't work properly. If you were a bird, how would you go about uh, cleaning your feathers? Do you think this feather would belong to? What colour would it be? Would it be a big bird or a small bird? Well, it might be a big brown speckled bird, rather like this one here. His name is Imp and he's a buzzard, aren't you? Imp has soft downy feathers growing next to his body to keep him warm. 
Now see those big strong wings? The imp is a bird of prey. He needs to be able to soar high above the ground and swoop down suddenly. The feathers on his wings are called flight feathers because they help him fly. And the feathers on his tail help him steer, a bit like a rudder on a boat. But a sad thing happened to Imp. When he was young, he was captured and he was kept in a cage that was too small for him, so his wings couldn't exercise and develop. So when he was brought here to the animal hospital, he simply couldn't fly. Now, Imp's learning to fly all over again, with the help of his friend, Colin. Colin weighs Imp each day. He mustn't be too heavy or he won't get up into the air. Come on, Imp. Every day, Imp flies a bit further, but he'll never be able to fly like other buzzards. Come on, His wings are bent downwards because of the cruel way he was kept when he was a young bird. Imp, you're a very brave buzzard. You keep trying and trying and trying and you never give up. And that's a bit like a bird in our story today. In the spring, in a tree, in a nest, lay a little white turtle dove's egg. Everything was very peaceful. Until over the humpback bridge came a truck. The truck came from the zoo. In the truck was a crate full of eggs. The crate bumped. An egg jumped out of the crate and into the nest. It was big and whitish green. One fine day... Quick, quick, called the turtle dove to her mate. Our family is hatching. Out of the little white egg popped a small grey and white baby turtle dove with fluffy down instead of feathers. Out of the big whitish green egg popped a big grey woolly looking bird. The turtle doves looked at their babies this one doesn't take after our side of the family, but he does look rather big and strong. He should be a good flyer. As time went by, the baby turtle dove grew bigger. Her fluffy down fell off and long, smooth feathers began to grow. The big, grey, woolly-looking bird grew bigger. And bigger. And bigger. His woolly down fell off, and sleek black and white feathers began to grow. But his wings did not grow. They were very small. Every day, the baby turtle dove cried, I want to learn to fly. And the baby penguin, for that is what he was, said, I don't. But at last, the great day arrived. The young turtle dove flapped her new wings. Here I go. Look at me. I'm flying. Whee! <laughs> she flew upside down. She looped the loop, then swooped up, up to the top of the very highest tree. Come on. It's your turn now. But the penguin wiggled his little wings. I'm, I'm waiting for my wings to grow. Perhaps tomorrow. And he stayed where he was. He grew bigger and bigger, but his wings didn't grow. Soon he was too big for the nest. The turtle doves were tired of looking after him. You must learn to fly, they said at last. So the penguin climbed onto the edge of the nest. 
summoning up all of his courage, he jumped. Here I go. Look at me. I'm fl fl falling. Oh, it's no good. My wings just won't work. Autumn came. The wind grew colder and the other birds gathered in flocks. It's time, time to, to fly, fly south, they said. To, to fly, fly and fly until we find a country where, where the weather is warm. warm. Come with us, cried the turtle doves. You can't stay here. Fly south with us. I, I can't. My wings won't work. The flock of birds swirled and flew off. The penguin watched them until they were just specks in the distance. He began to cry. I'm not even the odd one out anymore. Now I'm all alone. The weather grew colder and colder. Snow fell. But the penguin wasn't cold. His sleek feathers grew so close together that they kept out the cold and the damp. He made a great decision. I can't fly south, but I'll get there if I can. And he set off. He walked, and he walked, and he walked. Until he reached the edge of a high cliff. There was nothing but the sea below him. He did not know what to do. I've simply got to fly, he said. He flapped his tiny wings, he took a deep breath and wished. Please let me fly, please. Then he jumped into the air. Down he plunged, faster and faster towards the sea below. He landed in the sea, still flapping his wings. But instead of drowning, a strange thing happened. Suddenly, his wings felt right. They began to work under water. I can fly. I can fly. My wings were meant for flying in the water. They're water wings. Yippee! Well done, that penguin. <laughs> Must fly now. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> What can I see high above me? Up, 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 up in the air, way up high in the sky. Company this.